next for you? That's what I want to talk about. You're sitting in your new office. Uh, you are working right alongside by the new president at Winthrop University. Talk about your new role and your plans there. It's exciting. It, it is exciting. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I was say in my life, as much as I would try to plan, uh, my, my plans were always thwarted with something better. And so in reality, I'm glad I didn't get to plan because had <laughs> I planned, I probably wouldn't have, have been able to accomplish what, what was done because I shorted myself in so many areas. But Winthrop University is my alma mater. I was the last graduating class of Winthrop College in 1991. So my diploma says college, not, not university. Mine too. <laughs> but, and I, and look, I, I take pride in that too, of, of yeah. the old school. But look at, look at what Winthrop since 1886, being in Rock Hill, um, what Winthrop was and has become. I mean, it, it, it has continued to evolve uh, into a great university for us here. Unfortunately for us in the Rock Hill community, we had really a, a vacuum of leadership between the time that Dr. DiGiorgio retired yeah. in and around 2013 and 2022 when Dr. Cerna came in. We had two presidents during, during that interim, but during those times, there was not a lot of out focus uh, with, with, between Winthrop and the community. And Winthrop, as you know, the fabric that ties Winthrop to the community from an educational standpoint, from an economic development standpoint, that they are crucial and needed. And so with a new president coming in, the timing was perfect. Um, he came in from University of Maine at Farmington. Um, he, he has four degrees, you know, if, one of which is Winthrop University. That's his alma mater. The first time we have had a Winthrop alum uh, actually be president of the university. He also has a degree from Clemson University, from Auburn and Alabama. So. Wow. He's you got know, it all I mean, covered. I mean, th think, of the, think of the dichotomy there, <laughs> but we, we welcome him and, and he's been a great addition. He has two young children, 12 and seven, uh, and he and his wife, Lauren, live in the president's house here on campus. So you've got a vibrancy that just yeah. comes from the dynamic of a younger family uh, here on campus. So that's good. But my role is to continue to bring back and bridge the gap between the community and Winthrop University. We have started out with a bang on that for being more involved in the community that, that, that there's a comfort level between the community and Winthrop, that Winthrop is involved in that process. If you look at the connection between Winthrop University and downtown, there, there's a new part of that that's between the two. It's called Knowledge Park. The knowledge in Knowledge Park is Winthrop University. And so never forget that. That, that was the culmination of all of that work. Unfortunately, during the major development, Winthrop was somewhat outside of that just because we were in an atrophy period as far as leadership went, but that's no longer the case. So much like you have to prune a, a tree yeah. uh, to, to, for survival, Winthrop is being pruned. We have a great leader in Dr. Cerna to, to facilitate that. Uh, we have an engaged board of trustees here at Winthrop. And so my role here is, is much like it was when I served this community in the General Assembly. The difference is 1.3 miles from my home versus <laughs> 72 and a half miles from my home to get that done. But I love the Rock Hill community. There's, there's not a better place to live. I don't have to have ruby slippers to tell me I was already at home. And so <laughs> it, it three is, times it is, and you were there. Is, exactly. But it is a good soft landing for me to be a part of the community in this role. And so I'm looking forward to, to continuing to develop that. I put a, a, together a group of community stakeholders Okay. Uh, for Winthrop that, that are kind of eyes and ears within the community, uh, those that become our cheerleaders, whether you're a Winthrop alum or not, to recognize that connectivity that we have within the community. We talked about acreage a little bit ago with the Panthers property, or should I say the Panther Lust property, <laughs> but Winthrop sits on over 100 acres oh. right here in downtown Rock Hill, and over 300 acres at the Winthrop Farm. So over 400 acres within the city limits of Rock Hill is Winthrop University. I mean, that that is, is marked. And so to have that in this community is vitally important. What Winthrop provides for this community and what the community provides back to Winthrop, uh, that relationship 
It just needs to continue to strengthen. What do you feel is the immediate uh, factor that needs to be addressed right now in your role? I mean, I know you need to work with the community, get them more involved. I'm sure, you know, raise some funds, get people more engaged that way. But it seems as if you, you talk about in recent years, not as much um, attention coming to Winthrop and the attendance has been down as far as enrollment as well. So there are some concerns there. How does that play into your role as well? Or does it even play? It does. And, and that's twofold. So so take take two different issues that are at play here. Number one, it wasn't the community not reaching out to Winthrop. It was Winthrop not reaching out to the community. Okay. Um, and, and so we, we were at fault there. So mea culpa, and, and we move forward. But the other thing is like with your hand out, you know, your, your palm up. What I say with Winthrop, we want to be this way. Yeah. You know, it's a collaborative effort. It's a community sure. effort. And, and we we shake hands on it. But little things within the dynamic of higher ed, we're, we're partnering and collaborating with other institutions of higher learning. York Tech and Winthrop have now signed agreements to work with each other. Uh, that is happening. Um, Clemson president, Jim Clements, has been to campus. Okay. Uh, yeah, Michael Armoritas from USC has been to campus. So our flagship universities in South Carolina, both Clemson and, and uh, Carolina, both have had their presence. So there's collaboration and partnership opportunities there. The other comprehensives, uh, the president has now met with um, Dr. Cosentino from Lander, he's been on campus. Uh, our president actually went to Francis Mary and met with Dr. Fred Carter. One of and my favorites. One, he's a, a great, friend. A great, a great South Carolinian, a great American. Yes, but it, it's ways we can partner and collaborate yes. together as institutions of higher learning. That sure. We don't necessarily compete with each other. We serve the same public. But how do, how do we do that in the most effective way? So that's part of it. The other part deals, and that goes back to the, ability to attract students. I mean, sure. I mean, students vote with their feet. So, so they, they decide where they want to go. Right. Um, we want to make sure Winthrop is attractive, that, that what we offer in degree programs is current, mm -hmm. up to date, and that it's attractive. And so Winthrop has always had a great um, degree program for degree seeking, so whether it's biology, whether that's education. I mean, originally Winthrop was what? Education and home ec. So evolution had to happen, That's and it's right. happening now. And I think with Dr. Cerna being here, he's a decision maker. Uh, the other is, is for people that either during 2008, 2009, or during the pandemic, who got sidetracked, laid off, yeah. uh, didn't finish a degree for whatever reason, to go back and pick those non-traditional students up and bring them in for continuing based education initiatives that we work on your schedule. It's about building credit hours. That's another area that, that we're pursuing. So new degree seeking students, programs that fit what is happening today, esports, uh, Chuck Ray, who is our athletics director, you couldn't find a more sincere or better person uh, to serve in this role. Esports, we're ranked in esports, we're champions yes. in esports. And so to expand that program, that is underway. It's those, it's those involvements from people here on campus and within the community that make that happen. The connectivity between Knowledge Park that's right next to us and the sports programs that we have here in Rock Hill. Think about 24 years of international disc golf championship right yeah. here at Winthrop's campus. Uh, that's 24 years. And next year is, is our uh, Jubilee, uh, 25th Jubilee, to have that here, to incorporate more and more of what that is into the fabric of winter. All those things are happening. So we, we have plenty of seeds in the ground, and, and it is building itself to a great, great crescendo for Rock Hill, for South Carolina, and this community. And, and again, my role is just linking those relationships as, as they happen and back within the community for the president to be out, to have people at the president's house for engagement. I think it's been five years, I was told, but since we've had these gatherings and these gatherings are happening now. So yes. it's it's just, it, it's great days for Winthrop University. It, I can't think of a better person to be in that role than you, Gary. I mean, you, well, well, you, thank you. you are the connector. And, I, and, and as our world is changing, just like we've seen in, in the business world with with people's business plans and 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 
and in education, you, you, you have to change and evolve because our world is changing and evolving in so many ways. And if you really don't get on board with that, and if you're still trying to do things the old way, you will get left behind. And you have to, you have to be listening to what people want. And it's, you are doing that. You are the person out there making that happen. So that's exciting. Oh, absolutely. And look, adapt or die. And, and <laughs> so, you know, Winthrop, again, I walk this campus so just true. about every day. Yes. Uh, and, and the history here yes. is unprecedented. I mean, again, Rock Hill became a town 1852. Winthrop was here 1886. So Rock Hill and Winthrop are entering 137th year of, of partnership. Yeah. Uh, and I walk around the campus and I look at the dates on the buildings. Yeah. And then at 11 o'clock, the bells chime in Tillman Hall yeah. and it plays our alma mater, you yeah. know, Winthrop Ever Stand. At five o'clock Friday, as I was leaving Winthrop, it played Edelweiss. <laughs> I thought I've never heard Edelweiss played from, from the chimes, but I was thinking that's the community. And, it, and, and yeah. oftentimes we don't stop, Nicole, just to listen yeah. to the birds sing. Yep. And if, if you walk around Winthrop, which I encourage you to do, uh, walk around the campus and just just soak in yep. what is the history of Rock Hill, the, the, the connectivity between Winthrop and this town. As our mayor often says, you know, we, rightfully so, we're the good town. And this is our, our university in this good town. Well, I love Winthrop. I, my days there from 84 to 88 were wonderful. And I am so excited about what's ahead for, for now Winthrop University. It's hard for me to sometimes <laughs> wrap my head around that because I'm still old school with college. But listen, as we close, I do want to thank you for your time today, Gary. And I want to ask you to just any final thoughts on uh, your future and, and what lies ahead for you. Well, just being part of the community. This this lady came up to me and asked, she said, are you Gary Simmel? And I said, yes. And she asked me a question. Well, actually, I'm now retired. Yeah. I said, however, I'm still on duty. I'll be glad to help you. And, I, and the lady next to me started, we started having a conversation. By the time I left the restaurant, we had gathered eight or 10 people. And we're having a conversation about Rock Hill. They had come from Massachusetts, from Boston, from New Jersey, and from Somerville. And I thought we had this cacophony, this collection of people. The beauty of what that was is that it's, it's almost an Andy Griffith episode. Yeah. They wanted this to be their hometown. Yeah. And I thought, what better testimony yeah. could you ever have in a community? that people who move here want to be part of it. They want this to be their hometown. I am fortunate that York General Hospital brought me to this hometown. <laughs> and so I recognize the blessings that I have in this small town. I just want us to be the best we can be. And that's not done by me. That's done by us. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure to have you as my guest. Oh, Nicole, thank you. I'm honored. Absolutely. Folks, that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.